So before I begin, I wanna apologize about the raspy voice. I'm getting over a chest cold, but you're not here for me, okay? You're here for the Gigabyte Aero 14. And I love the fact that more manufacturers are jumping on the 14 inch bandwagon, especially with dedicated GPUs. It's one of the fastest growing laptop markets happening right now. And the more competition, the better for you guys, because it means you get better prices. And look, this is a beautiful looking laptop. It's using an aluminum alloy, so it's not like a full chunky metal design. It's metal technically, but it still has that kind of like plastic feel. And it's a good thing in some ways because it helps reduce the weight. Like this thing only weighs 3.2 pounds, which is very light for a 14 inch notebook, lighter than the G14. This Aero logo does light up. It's a little soft on the top, but nothing too drastic. In fact, this is pretty much a split copy of their bigger Gigabyte Aero 16, which I'm going to be reviewing as well. In terms of ports, it has a few ports on the back with a HDMI 2.1. USB 3.2 Gen 2, this is a type A port. And then on the left hand side, you have your type C port. This is 3.2 Gen 2, but it's also your power connector. You get a 130 watt charging brick in the box to charge this device. You have a micro SD card slot, UHS 2, combo audio jack. And then on the right hand side, you have two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now you can easily open this laptop with one hand. The hinge is way stiffer than the arrows that I reviewed years ago. So they're listening and they're giving us better hinges. It's not perfect, but it's, it's definitely much better than previous ones I've reviewed in the past. They're still wobble, but like once you put it in the proper position, it feels nice and stiff on the bottom. It's not gonna go all over the table. The keyboard is fantastic. It's a little tight because the body's smaller, but it fits perfectly. They didn't squeeze in a numpad or anything drastic like that, but the typing experience on this guy is incredible. I don't know, I love these chiclet keys. Like I think there's 1.5 millimeters of travel distance, but it feels good when you type on it. There's a little bit of keyboard flex on the deck, but it's not soft enough that it's gonna hinder your typing experience. Touchpad is also a good size. The accuracy and movement of the mouse is great. You also have the arrow letters embedded onto the touchpad. Some people might like this, others might think it's a bit too busy, but it's there. The only thing I don't like about this touchpad is the click. It's a terrible, loud click. It just makes the touchpad feel cheap. I've used way better touchpads with a clicking experience. This is definitely on the bottom of the list. The speakers are on the bottom of the laptop. There's two of them. They don't sound that great. They're very low. They're very tinny. They sound super flat. So you're probably going to prefer headphones instead. But the best thing about this laptop is the display. I mean, it's an OLED display. It's an AMOLED display rather. It's a Samsung panel. It's 2880 by 1800 and it's 90 Hertz. That's what I love about it. It is 90 Hertz. Hertz. It doesn't need to be 120 or 240, it's 90 and I'm cool with that because at the end of the day, this is not rocking an RTX 4090, it's rocking an RTX 4050. And 90 Hertz is perfect for this type of GPU. Now you do have a glossy panel, it's not super glossy, it's doing a pretty good job. You do have a 1080p webcam at the top. The color accuracy, the color gamut, the brightness, everything is fantastic on this display. You're gonna love this display if you're watching content and you're gonna love this display if you're doing any sort of design work. Now there is some PWM flicker, which is standard on OLED displays on laptops. If you reduce the brightness below 50%, it starts to kick in. Now performance is really interesting because this model has an i7 13700H paired with an RTX 4050 running at 45 watts. You get really fast DDR5 RAM and a lot of storage. It's interesting because the CPU bump from last year's 12th gen is kind of same as other laptops I've reviewed, but when you combine it with the GPU, it makes a really big difference. Like the big thing this year is not so much a performance jump on the GPUs. Like you are getting a jump up in performance, but it's the efficiency that really makes a difference. Like sometimes this 4050 is beating out 3060s I've reviewed. Other times it's in line with other 3050s that I've reviewed in the past. It's not a massive upgrade over a 3050 Ti, but it just really depends on the application you're using. Like if you're talking about the creative suite in Adobe, the GPU with CPU pairing, the efficiency of it really gives you a boost compared to 3060 laptops with i7s from last year. If you're talking about gaming, that's where the GPU kind of falls short. Like it's not that much more powerful than a 3050. And and in some cases, it trades blows with a 3050 that has a higher TGP. But I imagine most people are not buying this to be gaming on it 24 seven. Like this is a laptop 
that gives you enough performance if you need to quickly edit a video, but also would like to play a very efficient game when you have some downtime. Games like Overwatch or Apex Legends or League of Legends, like you're not cranking up Cyberpunk on this and playing it at full throttle. Fan noise is good, like on creator mode, it gets up to 43 decibels. And if you put it on meeting mode or power saving mode, it drops it well below 40. There is a little bit of coil whine. So if you're very sensitive to that kind of stuff, you will hear it on this laptop and that may bother you. But heat management is pretty good. You know, the deck of the keyboard never gets too hot. It does get warm under full load. And we're talking about stability tests that most people are not gonna be utilizing on their laptop. Clock speeds do get reduced more so than thicker, bigger laptops, but temperatures never really go past 80 degrees Celsius. Now this is Gigabyte's control center, which lets you customize certain aspects of the laptop. Usually when I have it plugged in, it doesn't default to gigabyte high performance. So make sure to change that if you want the best performance as possible when you have it plugged into an outlet. You have three different modes to choose from. Usually I leave it on creator mode when it's plugged into the wall, or if you're in class, you might wanna switch it down to meeting mode. There's also AI boost, which will kind of detect what you're doing. So if you have it plugged in, it's gonna go on creator mode. It's gonna make sure that the CPU gets most power when possible, or it'll switch to the GPU depending on the application you're using. So the internals are interesting because we don't have upgradable RAM. It's all soldered onto the motherboard. You have two big fans, three copper heat pipes, swappable Wi-Fi 6E card, and you have one slot for a drive. This one is a very fast NVMe SSD. Battery life is probably my biggest issue. I was expecting a bit more for this laptop, but because it's using a 63 watt hour battery and an H series processor, I was only able to get five hours and 43 minutes. I think Gigabyte did a pretty good job. I mean, these guys are not as big as the rest of the players out there, but I think this is a good notebook for someone who wants something super light, has a little bit of power that they can like do their work on, but also has a little bit of performance to game with. It's obviously not gonna beat out a G14 or a Blade 14, but I don't think it was meant to do that. My only big complaint is the battery life and I would have loved RAM that was more upgradable. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.